comfy UI. It's big, it's complicated, and it looks as scary as an HP Lovecraft Cosmic Harp. But it doesn't have to be. In today's video, I'm giving you everything you need to start making amazing art with one of the most powerful stable diffusion UIs available. Installing Comfy UI isn't actually that hard, but the rest of this process assumes that you have both Python and Git installed. If you need help with that part, check out my Automatic 1111 install video popping up now or in the description. We'll first need to head over to Comfy's GitHub page and download the .zip file. Once you've done that, just extract it using your favorite compression software to a location that makes sense for you. Now you'll probably end up downloading tons of checkpoint models, so make sure to keep disk space in mind. What we have here is the portable Windows version of Comfy UI. You can even put this on a pen drive and bring it with you to your local Starbucks. Just keep in mind that this only works if you're using an NVIDIA GPU or your CPU for your generations. If you're one of the brave souls running an AMD card, you can check out the GitHub documentation for more information there. Once you've extracted the files, head into your new Comfy UI folder. In here, you'll see two Windows batch files, one called Run CPU and one called Run NVIDIA GPU. This is how you launch Comfy UI. You'll also see a folder called Update. Inside, you'll find a file called Update Comfy UI. And you guessed it, this updates your install to the latest version. It's good to check in on the GitHub page now and then and decide if you want to update when a new release is available. Back in the main folder, you'll find the Comfy UI folder. In here, you'll find even more folders, but right now we just want to go into Custom Nodes. In here, we're going to install something called Comfy UI Manager, a tool that we can use inside the UI to make life a whole lot easier. In the address bar, type in CMD and then hit enter. In the command box, type in git clone and then paste in the link for Comfy UI Manager's GitHub, or just copy and paste it in from the video notes. Hit enter and Comfy UI Manager will magically appear in the custom notes folder. You can close out of the command box and back up one page to the Comfy UI folder. To actually make Stable Diffusion images, we're going to need some Stable Diffusion models. I've linked to the base Stable Diffusion XL model in the video notes, but you can download any model you see fit from places like Hugging Face or Civit AI. Once you've downloaded your models, you can open the model folder in the Comfy UI folder and drop them into the relevant folder. You'll see a ton of folders in here, but if you're new to Stable Diffusion, just know that your main base models go into the Checkpoint folder. Now, if you already use Automatic 1111, you can actually use your existing models rather than download them all again. To do that, head back to the Comfy UI folder and look for a file called extra model paths.yaml.example. Right click on it and hit edit with notepad. In here, you can edit the base path to your Automatic 1111 install location. Note that the path should be to your A1111 install and not the models folder. Save the file, close notepad, then right click on extra models paths.yaml.example and choose rename. Just remove the .example part of the file name and you're good to go. All right, it's finally time to launch Comfy UI. So head back to the main Comfy UI Windows Portable folder. I've got an NVIDIA GPU, so we're going to double click that option here. You can run the CPU version if you don't have a graphics card or if you have a lot of time on your hand, but just know that your generations are going to be enormously slow. All right, Comfy is just going to run its first time startup and then finally load into a browser tab. And you have this. But don't worry, we're going to go through all the basic nodes to get you started. If you don't see this when you start Comfy UI, you can click Load Default on the control panel here and it should load the default setup. First, let's check the control panel window here. The Q Prompt button will kick off your generation once you have everything set up. Ticking the extra options box lets you set a batch count for your generation. This is the number of times the generation should run. The default is 1 and setting this number higher requires more memory and will take longer. Auto Queue and Queue Front are options for when you're using Comfy Eye on a network with others. We're running locally, so we'll skip these for now. View History will give you a list of your previous generations and let you load and delete them from the control panel. The Save button lets you save your current workflow, and the Load button lets you load one. The Refresh button refreshes your workflow and is handy if you run into any problems after installing custom nodes, for example. The Clip Space button is more of an advanced feature, which we won't get into here but just know it can be used with certain nodes to make edits on the fly. You can copy an image into clip space, make some mask edits, and paste it back into something like a preview node to make quick changes mid-generation. The clear button will wipe your comfy UI workflow clean and load default lets you start fresh. If everything went to plan with the comfy UI manager install, you should see that button here now too, but more on that later. 
All right, now let's have a look at the spidery mess, lovingly referred to as the comfy workflow. You'll notice that the workflow is made up of several nodes with little wires connecting them. We've got the basics here, but as you progress with Comfy, you can end up with dozens of these interwoven nodes. So let's find out how it all works. Nodes will have either inputs, outputs, or both built into them, denoted by these little multicolored dots. Inputs into the nodes will always be on the left, and outputs will always be to the right. You drag the wires in between the nodes to connect them. Let's have a look at the load checkpoint node first. From here, you can choose your base checkpoint model that you downloaded earlier. Just select it from the drop-down menu. We can see that this node only has output, which makes sense, it's the first one in the chain. We can see that the model outputs to the sampler node. The clip output connects to the text input nodes, and VAE output connects to the VAE decode node. Everything is going where it should, and only connects to its corresponding color on a compatible node. Let's look at the clip text nodes next. Clip stands for contrast of language image pre-training and is what converts our text prompt into something that Stable Diffusion can understand and then guide the generation. The base workflow has two clip boxes. Although they aren't labeled, one is for positive prompts and one is for negative prompts. We know this because we can see that they connect to the positive and negative inputs on the next node the sampler. If you want, you can rename these by right-clicking and selecting title. Okay, for our positive prompt, we'll put in a fluffy tabby cat in a business tie, and for our negative prompt, we'll keep the suggestions as is. The empty latent image node is where we can set our image size and batch size. Check the notes for the model you're using for optimal image sizes, but for SD 1.5, 512 by 512 is your starting point, and if you're using an Excel model, you can start at 1024 by 1024. Batch size determines how many images should be generated at the same time. This is different to batch count, which again determines how many times the generation should run. So say we set this batch size to four and batch count to one, our generation will run once, making four images in parallel. If we set batch count to two, it will run twice, making four images in parallel twice, resulting in eight images. Most of our previous nodes now connect to the K sampler node, where the magic happens. Starting at the top, seed is the number used to create noise that Stable Diffusion will then use to generate your image from. Every single number will create different noise patterns, and so the image created will change based on this number. Control after generation lets you choose what should happen to the seed after every generation. So either randomize it, increment it, or decrement it by one, or keep it the same. Steps is the number of sampling steps that Stable Diffusion will run to get the image based on your prompt. You can play around with this, but 20 is a good starting point and know that higher isn't necessarily better, it's just different. The CFG scale controls how much Stable Diffusion listens to your prompt for the final image. The lower the number, the more creative it gets. Below that, you can choose your sampler and scheduler. Sampling is a pretty complicated topic, but just know that each of these options will produce different results and some are better than others. I usually stick with DPMPP2M, with Kara Scheduler. You can play around with these and find one that works best for you. Denoise tells Stable Diffusion how much noise to get rid of during the Stable Diffusion process. This can have a profound effect on your final image. Leaving this at 1 will probably get you closer to what you're looking for, but lower settings do have creative possibilities. The next node is the VAE Decode node. VAE stands for Variational Autoencoders. And while we won't get into detail on that here, just know that this node decodes everything that comes before it into the final image that we we see in our final node, which is the save image node. So let's put it all together and see our workflow in action. What's cool about Comfy UI is that we can see all the stages of the generation as they happen. Once we hit Q prompt or control enter if you're a shortcuts person, you can see the stages highlighted in green as they happen. You can also rearrange the nodes any way you like to make your own customized workspace. To move multiple nodes at once, just hold control and click on the nodes you want to move. Then hold shift while you drag to move them all. You can add to your workflow with new nodes by right clicking anywhere on the workspace and selecting add node. From here, you can explore all the built-in nodes, add them, and hook them up to your existing workflow. But the coolest feature of Comfy UI is that it stores the workflow that created the image right into the image itself. So if you find an image you really like somewhere on the internet, and if it was generated by Stable Diffusion, you can drag it straight into Comfy UI and get the same workflow. If you get a bunch of errors when you do this, it's finally time to use that Comfy UI manager that we installed earlier. We'll just hit the manager button and we can choose to install the missing custom nodes that we don't already have. Once you've installed all the nodes,
Node, just remember to restart Comfy UI and you should be good to go. And we can even install models straight from within Comfy UI. From the manager, you can also update Comfy UI with one click rather than digging into the folders discussed previously. And that's it. You're now ready to go forth and create horrifyingly amazing workflows in Comfy UI. But before we go, let's run through a simple example that shows how powerful Comfy UI can really be. Let's start with the basic workflow. I'm going to enter the prompts in the boxes provided as normal. Let's say that I want to mix things up and add some LoRa's. I'll just click anywhere on the workspace, then add node, then loaders, then load LoRa. I want to use two LoRa's, so I'll right click on the node and hit clone. Now I'll just choose the LoRa's I want to use and set their strength. Next, I just need to hook them up to my base model and connect them to each other. Then we'll connect the LoRa's to the prompt boxes and then to our sampler. Now I'm just gonna run this quick to make sure everything is hooked up properly and yep, it's hitting everything it needs to. But let's say I want to upscale the image right here in the flow. Well again, I'm going to right click anywhere, look for latent, then upscale latent. I'm going to enter my settings in here. Now upscaling requires another sampler. So again, right click, add node, sampling, and I'm going to add another K sampler. We'll just set the seed to zero and fixed and drop the denoise to 0.5 so we don't have too much of an impact on the final image composition. Now I'll hook up the upscale node to the old sampler so it passes the job to the upscale node, and then the upscale node to our new sampler, and finally that node to our VAE decode. Still with me? Okay, let's see if that works. Nope, we need to connect the model and the prompts to the new upscaler node. So negative to negative and positive to positive, and we'll pull the model in. And there we go. So we can see that the job passes through the first sample, then through the upscale node and then sampled again. And now we have an upscaled image. What if I want my upscaler to use a different model? We can do that. Right click, add node, loaders, load checkpoint. Select a new model, then hook that into the sampler node. The line to the original node disappears and we're now using the new checkpoint for the upscale. Cool, right? What if I want to get even more creative and have the image processed by two models before it hits the upscaler? Right click, add node, loaders, load checkpoint. That checkpoint is going to need a sampler, so right click, add node, sampling, and this time we'll go K sampler advanced. Hook up the new model to the sampler, then the prompts, then pull in the job from our first sampler. Then hook up the new sampler to the upscaler. Alright, let's roll it. We now have an image sampled from three different checkpoint models using two LoRa models and upscaled all in one workflow. If you want to try this for yourself, I've added this workflow as a PNG file linked in the description. I hope that gives you an idea of how powerful Comfy UI can be with a bit of practice. Let us know your Comfy UI tips in the comments down below. Thanks for sticking to the end of the video. Like this video if you found it helpful. And there is so much more to Comfy UI, so hit subscribe to catch more videos like this one coming soon.